Uh, I'm close with the Baltimore Ravens running back coach Thomas Hammy, but um, no coach in particular, no team in particular, more so plays. Um, finding NFL examples of uh, um, plays that we run and, and uh, just looking through different scenarios, different things that, that uh, our guys could end up seeing and, and uh, uh, just trying to get a lot of experience, mental reps in terms of watching the pros. What's been the biggest adjustment for you in terms of going with a different position? Uh, that's a tough question. I mean, it's all different, so I don't know if there's a biggest adjustment, but um, new guys and everything, but they've been great to work with. They're all working really hard, and, and uh, it's a really, really good group. So uh, nothing stands out as being any bigger adjustment than anything else. How much do you lean on what you saw out of these guys last year, uh, or is it did you come in clean slate? Yeah, Everybody none, just... none at all. Uh, it's a clean slate. I mean, I knew what those guys were because you see them play and everything, but, um, I mean, it's a new season, and, and uh, there's... Uh, relatively new offense in terms of a lot of things that, that we'll do. So um, it's kind of a fresh start for everybody. Even having never coached this position before, did you play running back at all? Uh, no, I'm no. sure you could guess that. <laughs> I, felt like I, mean, I carried the ball a few times growing up. Uh, I scored on one just for what it's worth. Uh, <laughs> but, but what did you do to prepare for this? It was now in January, you know. What did you do to cram for this, if you will? Uh, I mean, I don't know about it, cramming because the way that, that coaching works is, is if you're doing it right, you're kind of absorbing everything. So um, I've worked with quarterbacks before uh, in Baltimore and spent a great deal of time with them. And, and uh, in, in that world, you're talking about protections, constantly talking about protection. So you learn that uh, with tight ends, there's route running, there's run game blocking. So there's the run game. So the only thing that's really that's different kind of is just carrying the ball. And, and uh, uh, luckily, we got talented guys that are good at doing that on their own, and then I can help them. Uh, at least with guidance in terms of, hey, read this, hey, I think the ball should have gone here or there. So um, it's probably a little bit um, not as big of an adjustment as it would made, be made out to be. Right. Now, was this something you wanted to do, or is this something your dad said, uh, you're going to coach running backs and you don't have a say in this? Uh, something we talked about, but I, I was excited for it. Uh, he told me I was in, I was in uh, I think, Houston at like 11 or 11.30 at night, and he called me, and we talked about it, and, and I hung up excited. and. Uh, uh, I just laid in bed awake thinking about running back, so <laughs> I was excited about it. Between Oregon State and the Ravens, you did a lot of different jobs, right? I mean, and did that, I mean, did that prepare you to switch positions a little bit? I mean, is there something, some value? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at before. Maybe I didn't say well, but uh, just there's a, a totality in coaching, whether it's offense or defense, you see in the big picture. And um, I think being with tight ends, it's kind of a hybrid position, so that helps. Uh, being in the quarterback room in the NFL for three years is really helpful because you learn the big picture. Um, so certainly being being uh, in a few different spots is, is really, really helpful. And I think uh, most other coaches that are older in their careers, everyone's done it at some point. Um, so I think most coaches could speak to that with similar experience. Would you like to find a lead guy or is it just everybody mixing in and using a lot of backs? Uh, yeah, the guys are going to be put in position to do the things that they're good at. So it might be, it might be a, a certain run for a certain guy, a um, certain type of scheme for another guy. But obviously, any coach would like a guy to emerge that, that you can trust. But in reality, I mean, I'd like everyone to emerge and be, I'd like to be, be thinking, hey, I want this guy to be in. But man, I'd really like to be playing these guys too. So you'd like to be able to trust your whole group. Uh, I'd, I've never liked the way thinking about running backs like that, uh, like you're assuming that two or three guys aren't going to be good enough. I want everyone to be good. I think it's, it's pretty simple, but for some reason that's never, uh, never talked about. Devian was kind of acknowledged as the best blocker of the bunch last year. Do you have a guy, two guys that are standing out in that area? Uh, they're all doing a much better job. Uh, Ty Isaac has improved quite a bit. He's been, he's been excellent so far. Um, both fullbacks have been tremendous, Clint and, uh, and, and Poji and then some of the other guys are coming along too. So I think we need some more live reps. Uh, the spring game will, will tell a lot in terms of just live bullets flying and seeing how people react, but uh, uh, those guys are standing out. How has Kareem Walker been doing? Doing really well. He's doing a great job. He's coming along slowly but steadily and, and uh, getting better and better everything we asked him to do, and, and uh, uh, he's going to be able to contribute for us most definitely. Prince said you get supposed to depth chart pretty regularly and you keep updating it and stuff like that. Is that just a motivational play or is it something that you know you think that these things change and are pretty fluid practice to practice? Uh, yeah, it's certainly fluid. Things change and, and uh, uh, it's a meritocracy around here, so it, it just makes sense for everyone to understand uh, and have it be out in the open of hey, this guy's doing the best and then this guy's doing the second best and so on and so forth. So uh, in terms of it being a motivational ploy, 
I think if you were lower down there, yeah, you could take it that way. And if you're high up on it, maybe it's motivational the same way. You want to uh, get your edge and then try to keep it and, and make sure you're getting playing time. You updated every practice? I mean, the spring? You uh, not quite. I think um, maybe every few. I'm not certain that there's any particular pattern to it. But if things change, things change. We, we certainly reward uh, good performance and, and uh, guys who make plays and do what, do what they're asked to do. Are you hope to see Saturday and do you get anything more out of that than a normal practice? Oh yeah, no, no doubt, especially with the running backs because O-line and D-line and uh, to a large extent receivers and DBs is even when it's not live in practice, it is live. The, the, the speed is nearly game speed minus the tackling. So running back is the one position and quarterback where live tempo and, and getting tackled really reveals something. Because uh, you get to see in practice if you're just tagging off or, or what we call thud tempo, you don't necessarily know what would have happened. Uh, no. So in a spring game, it's definitely exciting to see who can who can create yards after contact and all that. We're hearing it's a different offense this year. Are there things specific to the running backs that are really being emphasized that you have to be able to do this well? Nothing different in that regard in terms of what's being asked of them now. Okay. What is different about the offense? How is it Come evolving? On. Come on. I mean, don't give me the playbook, but like, is it morphing in, in a particular way based on what you've learned in the past couple of years or based on new coaches? Or? Uh, I mean, certainly with the new coaches, things change because there's terminology that's uh, uh, more familiar to them and things that they like to do. Um, there's things I think we've improved on that we did in the past, different ways of, of teaching certain concepts um, to, to try to help the guys learn better and, and operate under stress better. But uh, in terms of specifics, I, I probably can't go into that. How much is Chris evolved from the end of last year? I know he gave weight. Where is he at right now? Chris Evans. Um, overall, I mean, he's just he's the same as he always has been in the sense that he's he's just getting better every single day, and he's doing all the little things required. And he's uh, on top of that, he's always seeking out extra, uh, always honestly assessing his weaknesses and, and, and working hard to, to improve himself. Um, in terms of where he's at, he's ahead of where he was, and, and tomorrow he'll be ahead of where I'm saying he is now. So it's going to be exciting I think, to watch him in the fall. You're still working with special teams, right? Yep. As well. Where is the return game? Who's kind of the guy who's going to be in the kickoff? As return man? Yeah. Uh, a lot of people. Okay. It's kind of a. Uh, uh, <coughs> there's no telling at this point. It's way too soon, but there's okay. a lot of. Uh, we've had, we've had a, uh, uh, shoot, DPJ. We've had Waze. Uh, Crawford, Karan Higdon, Kareem Walker, Ty Isaac, Levert uh, Hill, Ben St. Juice, um, Tyrese caught punts. Uh, Those are all punts? Kareem, uh, they're both. Okay. Most of them cross trained. And then as time goes, it's a different type of ball to track, so certain guys move themselves out. Uh, Khalid Hudson's not. We got a lot of guys who have done things like that in the past, so the only way to really find out who can who can do it is let everybody try and, and just the guys who are really very good just slowly start weeding them out and, and uh, we're getting there.